Thank you, Elias, and welcome everybody to another brand new episode of That Tom Clancy Show. I am, of course, your lovable robot guest, Mr. That Tom Clancy. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, everybody, uh, on Sunday I teased that there was going to be a slight change to the Monday program. And there was a slight change to the Monday program. It got rescheduled. But the change that I was actually referring to is something as uh, going to have uh, impact on today and uh, also future episodes of the show. Uh, what are you talking about, Tom? You might be asking. Well, today's episode is pre-recorded. So there it is. Uh, I shot the episode earlier today with our guest, uh, but because they're over in Europe, which is actually out behind you relative to where I'm sitting now, uh, I decided it would be better to try uh, pre-recording the episode and doing it live, or presenting the episode live to you with me in the audience with you. So I can laugh at me just like you're laughing at me. Because let's be honest, nobody's laughing with me. So um, I could take past Tom's thunder away and introduce everything for you. But, well, he seemed to really have a good time doing the episode. So I'm going to let him handle all of that. So without further ado, everybody... Uh, May I present Past Tom? No, that didn't work. Where's the thing? Thank you, future Tom. Uh, here in the past, we're doing quite well. Uh, and it's where I have the guest. So I'm sorry for all of you people in the future who don't get to talk with our guests live. But no that today's guest is also my first recorded test subject. But more importantly, he's the developer behind Bunker Buster, Bits and Pixels. Please join me in welcoming Xander Doverman. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Xander, how the heck are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, you know, I'm doing all right. Uh, Trying these new things out, trying to talk with somebody in the future from the past. It's not particularly easy. Uh, Tom, you better fix that problem I'm presently having before you get started on the show proper. I'm just kidding with him. There's no problem. So, but welcome to the show. Um, question I have started the show off with uh, for the last few days is, uh, what are you playing? Uh, what am I playing at the moment? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, currently, I'm not playing anything. <laughs> I'm uh, focusing all my time on programming and you know, learning pixel art better because my art skills are quite horrendous. So I'm trying to battle that up. Uh, you're, you're, don't sell yourself too short. I have to say that I really enjoy the art style you have going with Bunker Buster. I mean, that's kind of getting ahead in my notes here. But, uh, like, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was uh, going through uh, some of the media that you have on Twitter and whatnot. Uh, his Twitter address will come up in just a few seconds right there. Got you guys. Um, but I really appreciate the look that you have going for the game as well as some of the inventiveness behind it. But that's something we'll get to later on. But, yeah, dude, your art's, your art's perfectly good especially assuming that uh you're what a one or two person team i'm a one person team yeah uh trust me your pixel art is far less horrendous than mine would be uh doing the same thing also you've accomplished much more of a game than i would have accomplished as a uh, solo developer so dude you're doing great oh thank you thank you oh yeah you're absolutely welcome um well, dang, man! Everybody's usually, you know, everybody's been playing games before, so it's like I feel I am I'm I'm not prepared for this yeah, kind of eventuality. Uh, fully understandable. Yeah. I can talk about the last game that I've played. Oh, what was That's that? It was uh, PUBG with some friends, but it's like like a month ago. You know, uh, 
with the exception with the exception of a couple days playing Fall Guys and like two or three days playing Destiny, I haven't played much either over the last month or two. <laughs> you know, I, I got stuff to do. You know, I'm 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 running the show. I'm I'm booking new interviews. Like I actually just before we recorded, I was reaching out to somebody to hopefully be on the show next month. You know, I got got emails I got to send out. Like I'm. I'm just trying to sound important right now. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, like you're doing something really cool. So don't feel bad that you don't have an appropriate answer for this question. Um, so your main focus right now is Bunker Buster. Uh, yeah. I've taken some time to dive through your social media to get a good feel for it. But for our audience out there who hasn't taken the time uh, or had the opportunity, or even unfortunately known about the project. Uh, why don't you give us, you know, like kind of your elevator pitch for Bunker Buster? Uh, oh God, yeah. Uh, Bunker Buster is a procedural generated roguelite ask game. It's not especially like a roguelite because I've got some uh, progression features that roguelites don't use, like a uh, persistent world that gets saved. Um, yeah, the game is all about fast-paced action, uh, finding loot, creating these awesome builds between weapons and items, and having a, a fun time with the game. Nice. That definitely shows through in the videos that you've shared on Twitter. Uh, particularly, there was one I found last night uh, as I was scrolling through your feed that really uh, caught my attention, and it was... You were showing off, I presume, uh, your inventory and kind of like your build system. And there was a particular item that allowed you to play the game as if it were a retro style FPS. Yes, yes, yes. And I was just like, that's just crazy, man. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just, it, it shouldn't ultimately be all that surprising uh, because one of the interesting features about your game that I really appreciate is that the player has the ability to rotate the camera 90 degrees, uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Yes. So you get like this, so you're very clearly rendering this world out in 3D, but still it was just this this really neat way where it's just like, hey, I could play this game like, you know, ultra fast paced Doom if I wanted to, if I find the appropriate item. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you're definitely taking uh, uh, the, you're putting your own spin on, you know, uh, this particular type of game that I at least haven't seen before. And it's always nice to see what everybody's doing to help take something that has been, you know, it's a fairly well de uh, defined genre. And, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, actually, the guest we had on the show yesterday was doing uh, another sim uh, similar roguelike, uh, uh, like kind of twin stick shooter like you're doing. But uh, her game was more dealing with kind of like horror and haunts and uh, it was is very inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. And then yours, like taking, you know, that same relative formula, cranking it up to 11 and then allowing the player to shift the camera to give themselves, you know, a better chance of, you know, surviving in this crazy world. Yeah. So. That was one of the design problems that I've faced with it, because the game has some bullet hell moments as well. And uh, if I had a stationary camera, it would be quite hard to play the game consistently, because you've got to rotate and move and try and to dodge these bullets. And if the camera was locked into one position and following you, you would you wouldn't be able to see in certain moments the angle of a bullet and you will be get getting hit, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, i I mean it, it also doesn't help that some of your enemies have persistent bullets. Um those jerks. Uh you're like, dude, like I never quite I, this isn't particularly my my genre, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. I really appreciate a lot of the games in it, uh, you know, like Nuclear Throne is great. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, 
you know, the classics, like my first ever uh, twin stick shooter is like going back to Robotron 2084, which I still stand by the fact that it is an excellent game. And if you disagree with me, you're wrong. Um, But, you know, it's just there's a level of. Trying to think of the right words to use here for this. Um, Like, I appreciate the improvisation that's required to be good at these games. And that's a skill that I generally do well at but there is also a level of quick wittedness and higher reaction speed that i am generally not so good at (laughs) um but then again i didn't grow up playing like a lot of crazy games like that so that's probably why but yeah so uh you know, you were kind of down on yourself about this art style, but what, why did you decide to go with pixel art in this instance? Um, the reason is of I'm a programmer. I love to program. And art isn't my strongest point. <laughs> and uh, I tried factor art, just like drawing with a, a tablet and stuff like that, but I sucked at it. <laughs> so, I, so I thought, what's the other solution to making art? And then I thought, hey, pixel art. So I tried uh, pixel art for a long time, and uh, I still sucked at it. But with this project, I've been practicing a lot because I want to have a nice-looking game. Because if your game looks like yeah, shit, people get scared of it immediately and think, "Nah, I don't want to play that. It looks like garbage." So my art skills needed some yeah, upgrading, and that's why I've been practicing a lot with pixel art. Well, uh, you know, not. Uh... Not to toot my own horn here, but there's always low poly as well. Yeah, yeah, that was an option as well. But uh, then I needed to learn a 3D modeling software like Blender. Oh, God, Blender's Um, the worst. Yeah, exactly. I saw the UI and thought, nah, I'm not going to learn this. I primarily work in Maya for my 3D modeling stuff. So it's like I have a, a very set muscle memory. When it comes to, you know, like working around with the keyboard and the mouse for it. And not a single keystroke in Blender makes any sense to me. (laughs) Yeah. Not a single one. And then, like, it's it's right mouse button to, like, select things. And I'm just like, like, what? Feels off. Yeah, exactly. I think off is the wrong word. I feel like it was a piece of software that was designed by an alien who only knew roughly how humans interact with computers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but is what it is. Um, And the avatar you're using right now is, uh, I presume, your main character for the game? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, you can call it the main character. But he's wearing a... Uh, an armor set in the game that's presumably uh, it, it's kind of hard to get it's, it's up there with the battle loot nice and he's got some some nice double pistols don't mind me I'm just taking my virtual monitor and pulling it closer to myself so I can look at this like hmm yes <laughs> nice Um. so alright so another thing that you are doing to kind of define your game as opposed to others is so there's going to be loot and not just like different weapons but armor yes yes and i presume this is also going to have a you know uh like allow for different style builds you know like some level of stats or yeah exactly items um armor is split into two sections i split them into uh helmets and full body armor Um, And I'm going to tie in abilities with armor sets. So um, for body armor, you can... Body armor sets are going to get the more stronger abilities. For example, ultimates that you can use once in a while. And helmets are more like your spam abilities that you can use a bit more. That system isn't currently in place yet, but it's planned. And the the worst thing to... uh, create out of this is i have to think what's going to work and what's not going to work so that takes up a lot of time uh welcome to game development Uh, (laughs) yeah (laughs) 
uh, you know, ultimately the only way to find out is to try it and put it in the hands of other players. So I, yeah, absolutely. I, I hope you've got some friends that you can use as like uh, test subjects and be like, here, play this game I'm making. Tell me <laughs> if it's fun. Yeah, I've been doing that. Nice. Um, well, I guess one question I have, uh, especially with the idea of gear and tying abilities to different pieces of it, uh, let's say I'm playing through the game and I find a helmet that I really like that has a quick ability that I uh, really enjoy, and I find it early. Um, is Are the abilities that are imbued uh, this way, like... Am I going to end up finding like a helmet that's air quotes better uh, that has an ability that I don't like as much on it? Or are like the helmets basically just there to give me a bonus ability? Uh, no, you will be able to find a better helmet because helmets get all the stats rolled on them for that little randomization when you pull an item. Uh, but you don't have to use it because it's a bullet hell and what, the only other thing that armor does, it makes it easier for you when you're taking damage. So uh, armor piece gets a damage reduction bonus, and you don't have to wear a higher one that you found if you don't suck at the game. Oh, the man. armor is only there for helping people that suck at bullet hell and die a lot. Wow. I, <laughs> I feel really targeted right now. <laughs> no, no, no. Um... Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to think of how best to uh, word this next question. Uh, aside from gear, is there going to be any other form of like character customization? Like, are you going to have like like classes or different characters or anything like that? No, I don't. I don't like class specific uh, games, except Borderlands, but that's an exception. Uh, the reason I the problem I have with those games that you push you into a class. For example, one day I want to play as a warrior, and the other day I don't feel like playing him. Uh, I need to restart my whole, whole game and start from scratch, because I want to play another character. Yeah. And I'm trying with my game not to push someone into a direction. Uh, if you feel like playing uh, like that, you can play like that. And if you find another item and want to try something else, you can switch out items real fast and see how that plays. And if you enjoy that more, you can play like that. Nice. That's nice to hear. Um, although with, you know, like roguelikes and roguelites, it's it, to an extent, it's not always the most terrible thing in the world. It's like, oh, man, I've been playing this sorcerer, but like it's not working out for me. And then, you know, it's it, it, yeah. But uh, you mentioned something, too, of uh, like a, a what's the word I'm looking for, like a persistent progression. Yeah, it's not like your regular roguelite. Um I'll just explain real quick what I mean with that. Um, it's Bunker Buster, so you bush your way through a bunker. Uh, this, this bunker gets randomly generated when you start your save. Uh, but after that, the floors will be persistent. Your goal is going from the top floor where you start all the way to the bottom to find something. And uh, while you go through those floors, it's all procedurally generated. But those floors get saved, so you can retravel the floor that you've been on, and it will be the same. Uh, okay, it's so like uh, old school Diablo. Yeah. In that way. Yeah, and uh, that may sound boring because you think, "Oh, I've already been on this floor and I've done that," but I'm trying to uh, make little twists and turns every time you enter a new floor, re-enter your floor that you've already been on, and. Uh, yeah, that should keep it a little bit fresh. You don't have a lot of reasons to travel back because loot won't respawn when you've cleared a floor. Uh, enemies will be way easier to kill. Uh, the only main reason for re traveling to a floor are quests. So when an NPC needs you to find something and he tells you to go to that floor where you can find the item. Well, I imagine in that instance, uh, you know, especially as you're a programmer, you would have like a variable uh, built into the player uh, that is, you know, uh, giving you an item level or just like a level level. 
and then you know uh npca is telling you you need to go back to the fourth floor to get like a fuse or whatever and yeah. so you've already you know you're on like level 15 or something and like you're very clearly higher than this but then you could then just go like oh hey and there's also going to be like some crazy badass enemy that wasn't there originally who now can spawn there because your power level is above a certain threshold. Yeah. You evil, evil man. <laughs> I like it. Um, no, because that is uh, one of those things where it's like, uh, I do appreciate being able to go back and look over things, even if you're not necessarily going to get anything out of it. But it's, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to backtrack. You know, and sometimes, as you said, you, you'll you have quests or something else will come up or you missed something and you have to backtrack anyway. And if you already have a map and you've already cleared the level out, like, yeah, why should I have to do an entirely new level with different enemies? Cheers. Yeah. Wow. Cheers. I just added that yesterday. So, like, I am, I feel the need to just constantly be picking it up and putting it down. <laughs> um, I threw it at the camera, too. Oh, no, for some reason, it, I grabbed the screen, too. But, yeah, ha-ha, take that camera, <laughs> and now I have a new cup. Um, sorry, audience. Not really sorry. Uh, no, this sounds really interesting. Um, because so many games in this genre, it is a very linear progression. Like, the last uh, similar game that I got any level of good at was uh, Neurovoider on the Switch. And... You know, many times I got to the final boss and I almost beat it like once. But, you know, once the level was done, it was done. You know, you yeah, didn't exactly. go back to it. You didn't have the opportunity to replay it or something. You know, it was just gone. Yeah. You know, that's kind of sad. Main, yeah. The main reason that you probably want to retravel, uh, because. Uh, special enemies, as like you said, will spawn. There's a higher chance of having a special enemy there. And special enemies have their own dedicated loot pool, of course. So they drop, uh, for example, the helmet that you wanted. So you need to farm the enemy. So you have a reason to go back to the north floor. Another reason is, uh, like you said, with boss fights. For example, you really enjoy the boss fight. And you think, ah, I want to try that again. Maybe I can beat my uh, last time or something like that. So you re-travel, and you can beat the boss again. And, of course, bosses have their own dedicated loot as well. So you can farm a boss over and over for a higher chance of getting the item you want. Nice. I dig it. I'm down. Um, God, I'm just trying to think. Like, this is so weird doing this as, like, a pre-recorded interview. I'm so used to, like, having to I don't know, do something for my audience at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and just assume that somebody's already, uh, you know, used some points and just do a dab right here for everybody. Um, yeah, this is going to take a little getting used to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, what were some of the inspirations for the game? I mean, uh, I, I mean, looking at it, like I can very clearly see that like Nuclear Throne is an inspiration. Yes, yes. Um, and from and your fellow guy, Dutchman. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. He's a Dutch as well. He was one of the first guests I had on the show, actually. Awesome. Yeah, I, I met Rami for the first time uh, five and a half years ago or so now. And uh, we've been friends ever since. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's a really cool dude. I can imagine, because he created Nuclear Throne. Of well, course I mean, he's a cool dude. He also made Ridiculous Fishing, which I yeah. I like better. Uh, <laughs> you know, hey, different strokes for different folks. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, you know, there was also, like, Luft Rousers, and, you know, like, I, I can't even remember all the games he's made. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just... You know, so Nuclear Throne, uh, I'm just looking and like, you know, just using that one character you have there, there's even like, I can, I feel like I'm seeing a touch of Borderlands in there too. Yeah, but that's, yeah, yeah. I, I was about to say that. Borderlands yeah, it's, it's is in the color palette. 
yeah, yeah, Borderlands is especially Borderlands Two has mm-hmm. been a huge inspiration. Like I've sat with farming bosses and special enemies for better items. Yeah, that's just totally stolen from Borderlands. <laughs> and I, uh, Bunker Boss is actually just a merge of Nuclear Throne and a bit of Borderlands, and I've just slapped it together, and that's Bunker Boss for you. Nice. Yeah, take what you like and make it your own. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what I did with this. Nope, no idea how I'd put this together. This is this is all original. <laughs> Nobody's ever done anything like this before. Motion capture is an entirely new art that I invented specifically for this show. Uh, um, but no, like, dude, as I said earlier, like, I really dig the look of your game. So don't sell yourself short. It looks cool. Uh, oh, thank you. And I'm sure somebody in chat right now is agreeing with me. And I'm just going to say, you know what? I don't know what your name is because I can't read chat in the future. But you're absolutely correct. This game looks dope. Um, So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm looking over at my notes over on the cue card. And like three of them are literally just this game is impressive. Uh, Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just like I'm not gonna sit here and I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, just like inflate your ego if I don't actually mean it. And it, <laughs> as I've said to uh, a bunch of the guests that I've had on the show, like one of the great things about being a small show on Twitch and YouTube is that I don't have to have you know guests on whose stuff I don't you know directly and immediately appreciate. Like, so I can just, you know, uh, you know, with, uh, hashtag picture game stuff, I just look through and I find, you know, 30 to 40 games, I think look really cool and interesting that I haven't already had on the show. And I just message all of you and say, Hey, come be on my show. And, you know, probably about 75% or so say yes. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an awesome opportunity. Yeah, no, man. Well, it's just. Like, the indie community is filled with so many interesting people, you know, working on so many different interesting projects. I mean, uh, I never would have thought to mix Nuclear Throne and Borderlands. But you're here, and you've done just that. Yeah. You know, uh, and it's, it's one of those things that, like, to me, would make zero sense whatsoever, but it makes perfect sense to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly what I was looking for in a game, but I didn't really find anything that was close to what I wanted. So I thought, oh, let's create it my own version of it. And yeah, now I'm three months further. Yeah. So how long have you been working on this? Uh, for three months. Holy month. crap. That is, dude, you've made some pretty good progress in that time. Yeah. Uh, What's your uh, programming language? C sharp. Ah, dang, I was hoping you were gonna say C plus plus because like I got some nah, things nah, nah. I need to work on here on the show, and like I could really <laughs> use, could use a programmer's help with that. Nah, uh, I could learn it. If you really know. needed some help. Well, I mean, like, dude, I don't, I don't program. You know, <laughs> I, I, I do visual scripting. You know, it's just like oh, I, the, <laughs> it's, it's. I can understand the logic of programming. I just don't understand like the syntax and the language of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, so it's like, if you give me a way to, to kind of visualize my uh, programming problem, I can start working my way through it. But when you ask me to like write it down as like some abstraction, no, (laughs) no. Um, like I can instantiate uh, variables, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a terrible programmer. I'm the worst robot on the internet. That's not true. I've seen worse. But uh, well, we had talked earlier, and uh, how good are the chances of maybe playing some of the game for my audience out there? Yeah, definitely. I'll show some off. But right, please yeah. keep in mind that it's still yeah, pretty early in the build, and a lot of things aren't in yet, like uh, a lot of content, polish. You'll see some bugs, for, especially some physical bugs. 
uh, UI. UI looks absolutely terrible. Just, just, just keep that in mind. Xander, they're not bugs. They're features. Features, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to pretend to snap my fingers here in just a moment, and we are going to jump ahead to playing the demo. So three, two, one. Thank you, Tom. And Xander, uh, what are we looking at here? Yeah, there's this uh, bunker buster. <laughs> um, oh. You start like every basic ass rogue light. You start from point A, you just gotta go to point B. And yeah, you gotta find your way through the bunker. Um, yeah. uh, every room, when you enter, there's a bunch of enemies in. The, these can be pre spawned. So you see them all running around in the dungeon already. So mm -hmm. that gives a little bit more yeah, life to the dungeon, so it doesn't look that empty. Um, but after you've killed these enemies, waves will be spawning. Uh, after a wave is killed, after every wave is killed, the room will be opening up so you can go further into the dungeon. Nice. Yeah. Um, so just out of curiosity, uh, what button are you using that's uh, changing the camera arrangement, or is that just... Oh, no, it's not tied to aim. No, uh, it's uh, on Q and E. Okay. So it's easy to press when you're playing, so you've got control over the camera. Yeah. I've played a lot of rounds with the camera, actually. Uh, at the, at the, in the beginning, I, have, I, I had a stationary camera, so when you've entered the room, the camera will be shifting to the point that I've set it that it needs to be going to so yeah. you would have a clear vision over the room but the problem is this oh In some yeah. angles you don't see the character because it's too small so uh that's when i thought oh, why wouldn't i give the player direct control over the camera and it actually plays pretty nice i've gotten some feedback it can be a little bit uh, uh how do you say uh, nauseating when i'm playing and doing this the whole time but yeah, it could that's, be. That's, I can see that. Yeah. But I mean, I imagine that some players too are going to, you know, probably only go through one or maybe two camera changes, you know, per room. You know, uh, like clearly the people who are more familiar with it and more comfortable with it are going to be like flipping that camera all over the place. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. You know, for people who are just getting started, it's going to be that thing of like, wow, this is really cool to do. I don't see why I would need to do it all the time. But then as they get more advanced in their gameplay, like, yeah, I'm going to need to be doing this all over the place. You know, but they'll get their sea legs first, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You get used to it when you're playing. Yeah, kind of like people who uh, uh, initially have some problems with like uh, VR sickness and stuff that you generally do tend to get fairly used to it before too long except for me for some reason but that's why i just sit down no nah, man oh god those bullets are so mean i love the look of them though i like you know like the pink glowy stuff and then i imagine too you have different bullets that are gonna look differently as well yeah exactly Oh, your dude looks. I I really appreciate the look of the dude right now, who's you know just looks like a random dude with a big ass gun. <laughs> yeah, that's like, uh, the in the inspiration book? I've gotten from Enter the Gungeon, because Enter the Gungeon's weapon system is just uh, phenomenal. It's oh yeah, the weapons though, it's just so awesome. Yeah, so, they uh, are some of the most insane weapons I think I've ever seen. Yeah, exactly. And the bullet hell system that Enter the Gungeon uses for uh, yeah, making the bullet hell patterns, uh, I'm using it in this game as well. So that was a huge pain in the ass to get working, because it's yeah. uh, called Bullet ML, and it's an old scripting language that was made for uh, old school shmup games. And uh, yeah, you need to convert a lot of stuff yeah. to get it working. But uh, So I, I can really create uh, really easily create awesome patterns and bullets and stuff like that without any trouble. Uh, I've got an uh, NPCs in as well. Yeah, I was about to say, it looked like there was a, a shop owner there a second ago. Yeah, 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 there's a shop owner as well. But uh, when you're going through the bunkers, you will find 
little NPC scattered around <laughs> that will give you a quest. I'm uh, sure someone so stole my wig. <laughs> so, so you got a quest from him. Um, uh, I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, it's a bug now, as you can see. Yeah. My awesome UI as well. With um, his, this quest is actually uh, pretty easily. So you'll find Jerry and someone, a raider stole his wig. So you need to go retrieve the wig for Jerry. So you'll uh, get a, a uh, floor where you need to travel to. And on that floor, the special enemy will be. So if you kill that enemy, he will drop the quest item and you can return to Jerry and he will give you some uh, yeah, a quest reward and some XP. It better be a wig. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it is a wig. It is a wig. Nice. Well, I mean, you know, it's like if I'm getting a wig for this dude, I better be getting like his cast off wig as like a, uh, uh, a reward, reward for reward. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, man. No, dude, I like I dig this game. This is really cool looking. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, And for three months work, uh, you are your your UI is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> yeah, the UI is it's an absolute mess. But I'll focus on bugs first and features before I'll start messing around with the UI because it just takes a lot of time. Yeah, one of the things I say to uh, a lot of guests on the show, um, and it's just like kind of a truism that I abide by, is that. Uh, a fun game is going to be a fun game, whether it has a full art set or it's in gray box. You know, you can't make a, a game that isn't fun uh, better by just making it prettier. You know, it's just the, the, the fun of the game has to be there first. And, you know, like I clearly I don't have my hands on the game, but uh, this looks like a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, and I mean, so it's like, you, dude, you could literally just have, you know, uh, uh, blank sprites shooting at each other, and I'd be <laughs> down for this. So. Yeah, thank you. Ooh, can you hot swap weapons too, or? Yeah, this is uh, the player's hotbar, so if I press 1, I'll equip it, the weapon. And like I've mentioned earlier, weapons have their own special thingies. Mm -hmm. For example, this shotgun shoots in this pattern, and uh, if I'm level 8, I can show you this SMG. Nice. Uh, and as you can see, there will be locked doors that you need to unlock, and you will be able to unlock them when you find a keycard. So that's a little more of a... Uh, that's a little blocking. Doom homage oh. there. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Jerry again. Jerry, go away. We don't, we don't want you, Jerry. No, <laughs> we want to shoot bad guys. Well, I mean, I don't know if they're actually bad guys or not, but we want to shoot people in this bunker. Yeah, they're actually bad guys. The, oh, okay. I haven't, I, I haven't told a little bit of the law behind it. I, I, it's not. I don't have a lot of lore in this game yet because I'm still, yeah, thinking how I want to do things and stuff. But the main yeah, reason why this bunker is infested with bandits and stuff is uh, civilization has come to an end, and these bunkers were made to save civilization, but uh, it didn't go as planned, and everyone in the bunkers started killing each other and wanted to take control over the bunker. Cause so these you've, bunkers are... yeah, you've got a touch of fallout in there too. Though. Yeah, 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 I was about to say, yeah. Fallout, rage, yeah, I mean, it's just... You know, like, we're at a point now where it's like, you know, we have such a wonderful and diverse history of video games that it's, you know, there's so many cool things to kind of pull from that uh, we can, you know, not just, you know, like give us this level of inspiration, but so many things for us to remix on and really yeah. make our own, which is just, well, excellent. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here are some items. I clearly don't have any money to buy. I mean, so that's... I can, yeah. can Is buy that a them, holy but... hand grenade? Yeah. I, like I said, the images and stuff, it's all placeholder. Yeah, but I mean, I knew precisely what that was. <laughs> yeah. 
another thing I try to differentiate myself from regular regular roguelikes are uh, the item system. I currently only have four equip spots, but but my plan is uh, when you get higher levels, you get more uh, artifacts, equip spots, so you can equip more items. But the item system currently I have has uh, it works pretty great actually. Uh, you got your level one items, uh, and you can upgrade items if they're able to be upgraded. Yeah, that, 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 I'm speaking gibberish again. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's uh, fine. I, uh, I mean, with this, um, some items have different levels, and when you find two of the same items, you can level that item up. So mm. if I got two bottomless max, I can make a level two version of it, and I will do yeah, something a bit better than a level 1 version. Nice. And for example, some items when the max level will have a uh, whole new unique bonus added to them. No, that's... For example, that's uh, a... I've got a... Uh, uh, I got a item in that blocks incoming damage, and when that item is fully leveled, you will get a companion that helps you when you get damaged. So if an enemy hits you, he will go in an aggro for 10 seconds and attack everything nearby. Nice. Stuff like that. Nah, man. I dig this. Uh, and the SMG has a nice fire pattern. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, like, games like this, I just, like, personally, I just like to throw as many bullets out there as possible. Uh, because, you know, aiming, not always the best... Uh, I'm not always the best at aiming in these styles of games. So I figure if I just lay down like 8 billion bullets, like at least like a half million of them are going to hit something. Yeah, exactly. And it gets pretty chaotic when you've got uh, some items and have upgraded those items. The game will get really chaotic because I've drawn a lot of inspiration from another game and it's uh, Risk of Rain 2. Do you know that by any chance? I I know the Risk of Rain series. I haven't played it, but I am very familiar with having watched it. Yeah, Risk of Rain 2 is so much fun because it got really, really chaotic in a small amount of time. And I really like that about Risk of Rain. And yeah, I, I tried mimicking that into my game as well. It's a lot of stealing ideas from other games, but I. You're not. You're not stealing. You're <laughs> implementing. Exactly. You know, it, I mean, it's it's kind of like there's a an old saying uh, among like writers and storytellers that there are only you know a handful of different types of stories, and everything is just a different work of, uh, or everything is just like a different like remix of those original stories, and you know, there's only a handful of you know like game mechanics really and everything is just a remix of things that have effectively already been done you know and so it's like yeah i mean you're clearly not ripping off risk of rain because uh even risk of rain 2 is a completely different style game than the one you're making right now yeah. you know so it's yeah I, I don't know where i was really going with that but uh <laughs> you get what yeah. i'm saying where it's, yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean Oh no, did you have a bug there? Because I'm getting this no, restart I, screen. I, no, I died. Oh, snap. I, I suck at my own game. You don't and suck uh, at it, you're just not as good. Uh, another thing that I've tried keeping in there from the roguelike element is... Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, it's bugged. Uh, well, this doesn't happen normally. But I mean, it's uh, also a spelling error, but that's just... That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> but whenever you die, uh, your inventory gets uh, wiped eventually. Mm -hmm. But when, at the place wherever you died, a little gravestone will be spawned. So uh, you'll be able to retrieve your items when you re enter the floor. And uh, so, you, so you get punished whenever you die, but you won't get punished eternally when you die a lot because you'll be able to retrieve your items. So kind of um, like, you know, going back to Diablo or uh, like also kind of like a Dark Souls-y kind of thing too. Yeah. Um, uh, so if you're, 
I'm guessing if in this instance, uh, assuming your button wasn't bugged at the moment, it, um, yeah. <laughs> that you would basically be restarting from level one, but you would be playing on the same like uh, uh, seed. Yeah, uh, okay. you'll get pushed back three floors. So uh, if you're on floor five and you die on floor five, you will get pushed to floor two. So you need to re uh, complete the three next floors uh, with another thing that's still need to be implemented. Whenever you die, uh, the raiders around you are going to taunt you and stuff like that. And the floor will change uh, to, how do I say it? Um, the floor changes its appearance on how the player died. So if you get killed by a raider, uh, and you re you re-enter that floor, there will be like uh, little signs telling you to yeah, go away and uh, that you're too shit to kill him and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'll I'll restart the game real quick. I mean, I mean this in the nicest way possible, but you're kind of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, like that's just dude. That's just mean. Yeah, no, it's it's fun. It's, you get punished, and uh, you got a little elevator so you can retravel the floor that you've been on, and uh, yeah, so you don't. For, uh, how do you say that again? I suck at English. Um, uh, no, you trust me. Your English is fine. <laughs> uh, uh, oh yeah, another thing. Um, because I have all these floors. These, this number gets randomly picked between 50 and 100 whenever you start a save. So uh, every floor has a main category to say, like, and after X amount of floors, you will enter a new category. Yeah. And uh, for every category, it got its own sub teams. So, for example, uh, this factory floor got a uh, robot manufacturing floor. A uh, medic facility floor, uh, uh, a storage facility, stuff like that. So yeah. it changes depending on what kind of type you're in. Well, Xander, so, I appear to have lost your video stream, uh, but you know that's you know that's fine. I feel like I personally feel like I uh, we've gotten a pretty decent amount of gameplay there, um, but. Yeah, dude, thank you for sharing. Like that's the like, for three months work, that is a highly impressive game. Thank you. Um well this is normally where I would remind my audience that if they have any questions, but unfortunately, audience, you can't ask them from the future. <laughs> so uh instead, uh I'm gonna jump to a little bit that I like to call the five questions. Now, uh, if you're unfamiliar, and for people watching at home for whom this might be their first time, the five questions are a series of five questions that I have prepared before the show that have nothing to do with anything we've talked about prior to this point. So, are you ready? Yeah, definitely. All right. Question number one. What is the last book that you read? <laughs> yeah. I can't oh, say I've ever heard of that book. Uh, that's a really good question. If I'm totally being honest, I have no idea. It's been such a long time ago that I've read a book. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Not um, even for school or something, so I have no idea which book. Might I recommend uh, reading more? No, I don't like that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, question number two. Uh, what is the pet that you would most like to have? That I want to have. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, well, let, let me think. Um, I think a bear. I like bears. Yeah, I'm down for that idea. Uh, 
I've uh, I, I've I've thought about this before, and not like idly. Like I have I've put thought into this. Um, so we know that it takes uh, from Russian experiments. We know that it takes roughly fifty generations to go, and this is with foxes. So very clearly, it's not going to be a, an excellent analog to, for bears. But they're closely related enough that I feel that there's going to be some overlap in this. Uh, so we know it takes roughly 50 generations to go from a wild fox to an almost dog. You know? So yeah. I would love to see somebody, say, take, you know, black bears. And because they're, they're smaller, you know, more reasonable. And start doing them in 50 generations so we can have black bear pets <laughs> um yeah i have put way too much thought into this but yeah. uh i think it's also not a terrible idea cute yeah right uh, yeah. yeah they're all cute um, yeah yeah i mean i know you're down for this but like dude it's a pet that you can like almost legitimately ride too it's like uh, you know like dude it's not take him out for a walk or her it's they take you out for a walk sounds awesome yeah right all right that's 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 a great answer the last person i asked that question to said a dragon and i'm just like you know like but bear yes yeah um question number three what is your favorite street food uh Kebab, doner. Oh man, dude! Oh, I got stuff. We just became internet friends. Ah, uh, hell yeah! Um, I haven't, I haven't had uh, the dinner in in the Netherlands, but I have had it in Germany, and uh, I had some guys from Berlin on uh, last month, and of course, Berliners feel they have the best, and that's what I hear from people in Germany is that <laughs> Berlin has the best. Uh, yeah. But I would still love to have it anywhere because here in the U.S. it's like uh, to get dinner you have to go to a Turkish restaurant, and it's not like it, you know it's not the street version of dinner. It's not a kebab. It's not a it's not a sandwich or whatever. It's like the big platter and all this stuff. And like, don't get me wrong, like as like a sit down meal, it's very good. But damn it, I just want a dinner kebab. <laughs> And like in the styrofoam container with a little fork and then just like walk down the street eating it. Like that's what I want and we can't get it. And it makes me sad. Yeah, feels bad. Yeah. But yeah, I know. Yeah. I bet you're sitting over there like, hmm, like hmm, I could get some dinner right now if I wanted. <laughs> and I'm over here like you son of a bitch. But I love that answer. We're in enough friends now. Um, oh, hell yeah. Question number four. Uh, which historical figure would you most like to meet? <laughs> um, dude, what are you, these questions? I, I don't know nothing about history. This is the this, like legit. This is the first time I've asked that question. Like the the favorite <sighs> no, street I... food one like comes up all the time because I'm always curious as to like what people's like favorite street food is. Uh I don't think I can say this. Yeah, nah, screw it. I'm gonna say it. I want to meet Hitler. What? So you can like punch him in the throat or something? Yeah. Now I can ask him what the fuck he's thinking. You know, I'm pretty sure he's not actually thinking anything that we want to hear. But I am <laughs> super down for punching that motherfucker in the throat. <laughs> um, like, look, I, I, I'm fully aware that if we were able to go back in time and kill Hitler, that it would irrevocably change. Uh, the flow Everything. of history leading up to this point. But at the same time, I'd still kill him. <laughs> I, 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 look, I'm just going to be honest. I would, I would kill him. I would kill him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although, uh, uh, was it Command and Conquer Red Alert supposed a very interesting alternate timeline where because Hitler was killed in the past before he could rise to power in Germany that a Stalinist uh, Russia then started effectively World War II. Um, so that would very clearly be be bad. Yeah. But killing Hitler... Sounds fun. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's like a moral imperative. 
Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, question number five. Uh, what is your ideal vacation spot? Uh, I've been there actually. Oh. And it's uh, the Philippines. Oh, nice. Uh, some, they have very nice white beaches there. Nice blue water. And, uh, that's just amazing. Good food as well. A lot of nice juicy chicken. I've heard so, that. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Feed them a lot of there. Nice. Well, uh, Xander, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, hell yeah, man. So aside from your Twitter handle, uh, at Gangly Prism, is there anywhere else that people can find uh, status updates for Bunker Buster or anywhere else that you stay active to kind of update people on your progress? At the, at the moment, not really. Okay. I suck at social media. They, uh, you know, it's, it's a learned skill. Yeah, exactly. It just takes up a lot of time as well. And if I post something and I need to make sure it doesn't look like total crap so people don't get a bad view on the game. So that's why I haven't posted anything in like two weeks. I'm Dude. doing a lot of backhand work. And there's, there's nothing worse than writing a tweet and then finding out you misspelled something <laughs> and only figuring out that you misspelled it because somebody that you like or respect liked it and then you're like oh god now i can't delete it because they already like committed to to the like on it you know yeah sucks uh uh as you said earlier feels bad man feels bad man yeah well uh xander thank you so much for joining us today thank you for agreeing to be my first uh pre-recorded guest i know that this was kind of a weird interview but i super appreciate you being willing to take this weird jump with me uh and now uh, i turn to the camera real quick and i say hey future tom bring us home <laughs>